SciChem students, welcome to a lesson over naming acids. Make sure you have your stuff out so that you are taking notes properly. A couple of things about acids. We learned in a video or two ago that they are composed of a hydrogen ion followed by an anion, which is a negative ion. But the positive ion is always hydrogen. Acids have a pH that is less than 7. They taste sour and they're corrosive to many substances, including body tissue. So on that note, I actually want to play for you a video of what would happen if acid gets into your eye. So I found a YouTube video here of someone putting acid into a cow eyeball. So if you look at the eyeball originally, it's black and dark. It's dark so that light can pass through so that we can see. Um, and watch what happens as they add acid to it. And he says that they're adding sulfuric acid to it. And you can see right away it starts to affect the eyeball. Part of it's turning white, it's expanding, so you're seeing all these weird things happen to it like a color change. The worst part though is that the eye is starting to turn cloudy and white. What that means is it's scarring the eye, it's denaturing the proteins of the eye, and it's causing it to be blind. So if the eye gets white and cloudy like that, light can't pass through and blindness occurs. This is what we mean by corrosive to body tissues. So feel free to Google stuff on that, um, but acids are very dangerous, hence why we wear eye goggles in the lab. More about naming acids. If the acid formula contains oxygen in the anion, such as something like H2SO4, it's known as an oxyacid. So there's three rules for naming acids, and it's all based on the anion name, which makes sense because we know the cation has to be hydrogen. So here's the first type of acid. If we have hydrogen and then an anion ending in ide. So when does the anion end in ide? As we learned before, the anion ends in ide, usually if it's a negative ion on the front of the periodic table, such as chloride or fluoride. So we will name these type of acids with hydroblanchic acid. You take the root from the anion name and fill in the blank. So what do I mean by this? So obviously acids are going to start with hydrogen, but that's how we identify them. It's not how we name them. We name them based on the anion, which is the part that follows the hydrogen. So if we look at this anion, we know that it's chloride. So the name of our acid is going to be hydrochloric acid. For our next one, again, this is fluoride. So the name of the acid is hydrofluoric acid. Okay, our second rule for naming acids are if we have hydrogen and then an anion that ends in eight. Well, when does the anion end in eight? It has to be a polyatomic ion, such as sulfate or phosphate, because the acid will then be blanchic acid. You take the root from the anion name and fill in the blank. What you want to do is remember this little saying. I know it's corny. It says, what I ate was icky, but I'm all about corny. It's going to help you remember this naming rule. So you take any polyatomic ion ending in eight, and you're going to change it to ick. Simple. So again, we identify as a acid because it starts with hydrogen, and then we look at the polyatomic ion. Because we know this is nitrate, we take the eight part and we're going to change it to ick. So this is known as nitric acid. Notice, no hydro. So if you have a polyatomic ion with your acid, no hydro in the name, okay? Here's our second example. It starts with hydrogen, and then we have the second part. As we know, this is carbonate. We're going to take the 
eight part and we're going to change it to ick. So this is carbonic acid. Notice at the bottom here I have an important note for you. So make sure to write this down. This is an exception to the rule. It says when an anion contains sulfur or phosphorus, the roots are sulfur and phosphor, not sulf and phosph. So H2SO4, because SO4 is sulfate, is sulfuric acid, not sulfic acid. And H3PO4, PO4 being phosphate, this ends up being phosphoric acid, not phosphic acid. So realize that the roots for these are sulfur and phosphor. Make sure to write that down. This is the third rule for naming an acid. Again, it's another polyatomic ion one. If you have hydrogen with an anion ending in ite, this means it's a polyatomic. Okay. Then the acid name is blank acid. Take the root from the anion name and fill in the blank. Again, I have a corny saying for you. But corny totally works. Kids will remember this all year if they remember the corny saying. The snake bite was poisonous. So we're going to take it and change it to us. Again, we identify an acid by the fact that it starts with hydrogen. This is nitrite. So we're going to take the it part and change it to us because the snake bite was poisonous. So the name of our acid is nitrous acid. For the next one, we have hydrogen followed by chlorite. So we're going to change the ite part to us. So we have chlor us acid. Like I said, these are the hardest naming rules. So just to recap really quickly, the first rule is for anions ending in ide. They're on the front of your periodic table on the right hand side. These are hydroblanchic acids. So like hydrochloric acid, hydrofluoric acid, hydroiodic acid, all of those um, anions that are nonmetals on the right side of your periodic table. The next two rules apply to polyatomic ions only. If your polyatomic ion ends in eight, you change it to ick. When I ate was icky. So nitrate will be nitric acid. Carbonate will be carbonic acid. And then lastly, your ite polyatomic ions change to us. So nitrite turns to nitrous acid. Chlorite turns to chlorous acid because the think bite was poisonous. You will also need to be able to write the formulas for acids. So in order to do that, you can just work backwards. Acid formulas must be crisscrossed, as we learned with ionic compounds, so that the charges equal out to zero. So I know Mr. Crump explained to you in detail how the charges cancel out. I'm just going to use the crisscross method in this video to explain how to get the formulas for these acids. Okay, so if we got hydrobromic acid, because it has hydro, we know that the anion is going to be bromide. It has to be an eyed acid if it's got hydro in it, right? So we know that the cation is H+, plus, and bromide is minus 1 because of the trend on the periodic table. So I've got H plus and Br minus. Remember that when your oxidation numbers are the same, in this case plus 1 and minus 1, they cancel out. And so we just have HBr. The way that I usually explain this is if the charges are the same, they cancel, so you can just smush them together. For the next one, we have acetic acid. We know we need to change ic back to 8. So I'm talking about acetate. We know, because we've memorized that acetate is C2H3O2 minus 1. Our cation has to be hydrogen since this is an acid. So I'm going to crisscross these. Again, my oxidation numbers are the same. I have a plus 1 and a minus 1. So I can cancel them and they just smush together. So my formula for this is 
HC2H3O2. And then lastly, phosphorus. Since it ends in us and the snake bite was poisonous, I know to change this back to ite. So I'm looking for phosphite, PO33 minus. I need to crisscross hydrogen with a plus one charge with phosphite with a negative three charge. So this is the first time we're actually having to use the crisscross method. So only the number, not the charge, gets crisscrossed. So the subscript for hydrogen becomes three. I've got H3. And since hydrogen only has a plus one charge, we don't have to show that whenever we're crisscrossing for the phosphite. So it's just H3PO3. Remember that ones are understood, so we've just got one phosphite here. Now, if it was a different element that had more than just a plus one charge, don't forget you would have to put your phosphite in parentheses and then put the number outside of that. But since hydrogen is just plus one, it's not necessary. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial over naming acids. Be patient. Naming acids is the most complicated one. I will work with you in class tomorrow. Write down your questions. Have them for me, and I'll work with you as a class and individually. I look forward to seeing you in class tomorrow. Have a great evening.